Red Bull Ring, based in Austria, in the Salzburg Hills, has been the home of the Austrian Grand Prix for a number of years. Heading out as the Austrite Ring, the Grand Prix was held there for 18 years, from 1970 to 1987. But then the track F1 outgrew the layout that was currently there, and so just adjusting the volume, and never returned until 1997, when this version of the Austrian Ring was created and called the A1 Ring due to its sponsors. This stayed the same from 1997 till 2003. With its nine corners, eight if you don't technically count them, turn two, which is flat out in cars but pretty hairy on motorbikes, and then became Red Bull Ring in 2011 when it was reopened by the company Red Bull. As the circuit remained un unusable for several years. This season in Formula 1 it was used twice at the start of the season due to the Covid situation. And it's our Club 100 drivers that are heading round in the slippery conditions here today for round five of the Club 100 Gran Turismo Sport Championship. We're currently just starting qualifying as you can see ten minutes, eight minutes currently left on the clock and we're looking at Sam Dimelo there the championship organiser. Now as you can see this is the first wet race we've had in the GT Sport Championship this year and shall we say it's been quite a build up we're due to do it three weeks ago two weeks ago sorry and the server issues over time has meant that we haven't been able to do this race but it has meant the drivers can get a lot of practice in and I'll be honest they've needed it it's been very slippery. I've been out with them for one of the practices and the conditions were absolutely challenging is the best word for it. Trying to limit that wheel spin, trying to keep it on the circuit so you're going to see a lot of thrills and spills during this race. Now just heading towards the championship while they're can continuing qualifying they should be on their first flying laps at the moment so we'll see how that leads but I will update you with the championship first remembering that this may be round five but we've only actually had um, three races at the moment round two was abandoned due to a couple of server issues for some drivers so we ran a non-championship event that day we will be going back to that at the end of the season to create our season finale but currently after three races we do have Nathan Maximum one point clear of Ryan Sandell in the points both of them with one win each and a second place and both with one fastest lap in those races the one point being in the last race which was actually won by Tim Clark who's fourth in the points Splitting those is Trevor Randall in third, who has been consistent all the way through, and his second place last time out with fastest lap means he sits third, only five points off the lead. The top four pulled away with Callum Brewer in fifth, Kirk Callaro in sixth, Martin Robinson in seventh, and Sam Dimelo in eighth. Level on points with Jay Elliott. Andrew Maffer rounds out the top ten with Jack Cameron, Drayton. Eric Mignon, Peter Harris, Rory, Freddy, all rounded out the top 15 in the championship. Remembering Freddy's back this week, um, Rory replaced him in his team. Rory has been asked if he wants to race the rest of the season in a single car team, 
Um, I believe he's going to try and race when he can, but that will be open. I don't think he was able to tonight. So we'll head off to the qualifying session now. As you can see, no surprise at all to see Nathan Maximum currently fastest by almost half a second from Ryan Sandell. The two have been dominant in qualifying so far, taken front row both times. And it's actually been Ryan with the pole position both times in the two qualifying sessions we've had so far. We've um, had Trevor Randall fourth twice so far with Tim Clark and Freddie Gallagher sharing the third places. Ryan making a mistake there, so that's another lap um, abandoned. Uh, Sam Dimlow just sets a 148.3 probably about three and a half seconds off the pace of Nathan but the gaps are going to be huge between these drivers because if you nail one lap you're going to pull a huge amount of time out of the rest of the field so we will find somebody near the end of the lap where's Tim he's there all the cars seem to be pretty close together so we'll find somebody who's coming round is that Jack Yes it is, we'll go on board with Jack if we can, there we go, and he's just coming into the final corner, so we'll ride with Jack for this qualifying lap, and we'll see how he's coping with the conditions, as you can see, having to be very careful on the throttle, and not over revving the engine at all, so we're coming down and start finish straight, across the grid Hatchins right now, Jack sets a 4 to 6, 4 to go into 6th place, Breaks nice and early for the uphill turn one. Gets it turned in on first gear, short shifts to second and probably to third. No, he revs it up for third gear. We've got three minutes of qualifying session remaining. That will be probably two laps, maybe three for some drivers. Heads up the hill through turn two, flat out into turn three. Late on the brakes. You can brake later into here, but with the slippery conditions, it's just about staying on the circuit to start with good start here by Jack this is quite a good lap here so far he's running down the hill towards turn number four this is probably one of the trickiest corners on the circuit runs away down the hill especially with the water the puddles will build up on the exit you've just got to be careful short shifting Ooh, well caught there by Jack as he goes into turn five nice and carefully turning in due to the wet weather as, as you can see constant improvements coming on the left hand side so we'll go back to them in a minute through turn six jack only a tenth off his best so far so that's pretty good with that slide as well keep short shifting to keep the wheel spin down as he heads into the final couple of corners the two corners where I think it was 1998 Michael Schumacher ran wide and lost his front wing and had to carve through the field. No problems here for Jack. There isn't any gravel on the outside anymore due to runoff time, time out runoff areas. Oh, Jack just caught it on the curb there. Got to be a wheel spin, snap oversteer, and he crosses the line and only looked 6,000 slow that time. So he, that was quite a good lap by Jack to ride on with. It gives you an idea of what the conditions are like here today. So we will head back to the front. We have Nathan still on pole position by that same gap. I think the, the first lap was normally the quickest, but it also comes with confidence. You'll get his constant improvements. Ryan Sandell in second. And Callum... Oh, I'm not sure where Callum's off to there, but Callum is currently third on the grid. Only just ahead of... Our standard fourth place man on the grid, Trevor Randall. Looks like Callum has ended his qualifying session, so he won't go any quicker now. So be, that will currently be his best qualifying. He's only qualified six feet for both races so far this season. But can Ryan Sandell get any quicker? We'll look further down the grid. We've got Tim Clark in fifth, Jack Cameron in sixth. Jay Elliott in 7th, that's very close between Jack, Jay and Martin Robinson and Kirif Kalirai, all within a 10th of each other there. Freddie Gallagher back in the 
Silk cut Castrol Porsche after missing the last round due to work commitments. We've got Peter Harris currently in 11th. That would be Peter's best qualifying of the season. And um, there's Andrew Maffa and Eric Mignon battling over position there. And they sit 12th and 14th with Sam Dillow in between in 13th. So we'll just try and see if we can catch people coming across the line. Let's see if Ryan can go any quicker here. Is he going to be able to snatch back his third pole position of the season for Nathan? Or is Nathan just going to make it through? As he comes through, sets his three temps down. He's got a lot to find in what is basically three corners. We'll stay with Ryan here. Out wide onto the curve. That's probably not done his traction any good. But he's going to throw everything at it into these two corners up over the curve on the inside. Runs slightly wide. That's not that's fine for the track limits. And oh snap over steer there off the curve for Ryan. So he comes across the line and there's no improvement there. Second down on his best lap. Martin Robinson improves his time but stays eighth. We've got Callum there, we know he's sort of finished. Trevor Randall, fourth for the third event running on the grid. Consistent, if nothing else. Tim Clark, he stays fifth. Jack Cameron, he's in sixth place on the grid, which is his best of the season, I believe. Jay Elliott in seventh. He's ended his session. Martin Robinson in 8th, Kiev Kalurai in ninth. that's his best of the season, and Freddie Gallagher in 10th, so we're now going to head for the race, you've seen the grid, this is a 20 minute race, and here we go, they're lined up on the grid, who will get the whole shot, especially with the traction we have off the line, in the wet conditions we're going to bring up the lights are going to start to go red anytime soon the engine notes will rise and we're away in Spielsburg. great start by nathan ryan the grid seems to have got away pretty well there's somebody really slow at the back there i think that may be curve cali right but i'll take a look in a minute no it's not it's somebody else but see but a good start by the two leaders they've got away Callum Gruel fighting Trevor Randall for third place here we've got Tim Clark in fourth close behind and they're going to go three abreast no they're not into turn three Callum on the outside Trevor on the inside will this give Callum a run down into turn four all sideways moment for Tim Clark there but he grabs it up they head down the pack head down to turn four i think it was eric mignon who had a bad start there but it is currently nathan maximum who continues to lead sideways in the golf porsche from that but having the bright pink ryan sandell porsche right behind him probably pretty distracting in these conditions Trevor Randall holding off Callum on this opening lap almost two by two because Callum and Tim Clark are teammates and Freddie Gallagher has had a great start from 10th on the grid moving up to 6th Freddie who qualified well at the first round but had an, had an error at some point I can't quite remember what happened there but he fell down the field and will be looking for a good result on his return we have Callum has now let it looks like let his teammate Tim Clark through to have a go at Trevor Randall no he's fighting back now teammates holding each other up slightly here as Callum goes back to the inside of turn one and he makes a move to see or Tim goes around the outside well held there by Tim Clark and two teammates continue to be back side by side and close behind you have two by two with Freddie and Jack Cameron Drayton but we'll look back at two teammates still side by side into turn three these two drivers leading 
teams championship at the moment really don't need to be held, holding each other it is some great formation right, driving here it's something we've seen Speedway to hold the rest of that pack, pack rest of the pack back it's a couple of tons back in but we're still side by side we've been side by side for almost a lap here and Freddie pops his nose inside of Tim Clark will he make it past there no no no, Freddie's gone back to the outside of Tim. And he's made that stick. Great move there by Freddie. And the two the teammates have crossed each other there for sure. They certainly look like a pair who were not working together to move up through the field. Just going to, Oh, but Tim's got Freddie back. Great slide up the inside there. You can see Karen sliding the back end. So is Tim. But we'll head back to the front where we have Nathan Maximum leading by Ryan Sandell on to lap three. And seven tenths of a second gap there. Still easily close enough if Nathan makes a mistake. Trevor Randall having a lonely racing third at the moment as he's pulled a gap from Cal Brewer. There's Tim Clark with Freddie Gallagher. Jack Cameron Drayton, Martin Robinson making up that pack down to 8th place and it's Peter Harris that leads the next pack from 9th Jay Elliott in 10th with a slowdown to get rid of he will do as the race goes on and Sam Dimlo close behind and at the next pack is Andrew Maffer and Eric Mignon having a bit of a fight into turn three. And Kev Kalirai is off the back of a pack. I'm not sure what happened to him there. He definitely got a good start because I saw him in about eighth place on the opening lap. But obviously a mistake somewhere there for Kirif. But we'll go back to his battle for fourth place. The two teammates still fighting. They've managed to pull away from Freddie Gallagher now, who is under pressure from Jack Cameron Drayton and Martin Robinson. Different lines being used here. Ah, oh, Freddie's made a mistake there. Both of them have got through, both Jack and Martin. Martin completely sideways in that yellow Porsche. But we still have 15 minutes left on the clock. And this pack will only close up as mistakes start to happen. As we saw just there by Freddie, who was looking at fourth place at one point and is now down in eighth. But Freddie obviously has pace to get back up there, so in these conditions, anything could happen. I can also see Jay Elliott has made his way past Peter Harris for ninth place. But these two teammates are catching each other as Martin Robinson now looks at Jack Cameron. Thought he was going to make that stick, but the inside must be far more slippery than racing line. So Martin looks to get the street hooks through turn two into turn three. Prime overtaking spot and less human McLaren's in 1999. We took each other out on the opening lap. Martin looks to the outside. And we'll probably go for the cutback. Yes, he will. Oh, and Jack spun and holds up Martin. And Freddie Gallagher says, thank you very much. I'll take both those positions. But at the front, we will go. And old Callum's run wide there for fourth place as Tim Clark makes his way past. The two teammates still fighting hard. But they are scoring great points in every race for this team. I think Callum had a few tyre issues in the feature reverse grid race we had last time out. And that sort of cost him a good result. I think he finished down in about 10th of that. But this is team driving. Yeah, they've held each other up and let Trevor get away. But they could probably work together and catch that back up. Trevor and up these conditions not helping Trevor at all he's one of the only drivers on a pad I can't remember if there's anybody else I'm not sure there is but Trevor Randall one of the quickest drivers I know on a pad and he is running in a very strong third place only four seconds off second and six off the lead but that gap has grown as Nathan Maximum pulls away 
it may look very dominant at the moment but I can certainly say that this race will not be over even if you pull a big lead Nathan would be trying to keep it clean and bring his cool Porsche home in the lead he's currently doing a 44.6 which as you can see is the fastest lap of the race so far uh, Ryan Sandell's best is a 45.3 so almost a second quicker if you take their fastest laps as Ryan runs deep into turn 4 Ryan will not want that gap to extend too far as he snakes his way through there this is more slippery than an otter's pocket out there and as you can see the drivers are really having to work for it as they come through turn 7 Ryan Sandell hopefully will keep the pressure on Nathan and this championship fight will continue between these two. In third and fourth, Trevor and Tim are still in this championship fight, only a few points off the lead. Within 10 points of the lead and a good result here, even if it's in reverse grid where we go to Yamagiwa, it, anything can happen, can't it? In racing and in these conditions especially as you can see what third fourth and fifth closing up together tim clark slightly leaving his teammate behind to bend for himself there's callum slightly no man's land but if tim and trevor start fighting you can certainly close that gap we look further back and there is peter harris having one of his best runs of the season in 8th place currently keeping that Porsche controlled nicely into turn 3 Peter who was on the front row for the reverse grid race last time out the only one we've had so far due to connection issues and Peter come home in ninth place in the end fell backwards off the front row but this is a great drive I think he started at the back of the grid for this or at least on the back row and he's managing to hold off former elite Club 100 driver Jay Elliott behind and the Club 100 tester Sam Dimolo down in 10th maybe being shown up a little bit here by Martin Robinson his teammate in 7 Sam didn't have the best start of the season when the two collided in turn two on the opening race but Sam did turn it around with fifth place last time out and hopefully that's the turning point for his championship but there's Jay Elliott closing in on Peter Harris he's got a slow down penalty so I'm wondering if Jay has perhaps Peter and they had an issue and dropped back Jack Camp oh I missed that Jack Camp down to 11th place that's why Peter had gained another position Jack, who was looking at a fight with Martin Robinson, has all of a sudden dropped back. Very easy to make mistakes in these conditions. There's Eric Mignon in 12. Andrew Maffer now coming under pressure from his own teammate in Callum Wright. Team Black are not having a good race here, sitting in 13th and 14th position. This will not do their championship any good and they will really be looking to push forward and hopefully score some better points during this event because they will really not want to they're currently sitting sick from the championship just ahead of the green team which if I remember rightly let me just find who passes the green team the green team is Jay Elliott who has just got back to Peter Harris actually and Jack Cameron should know because they've got they're the only team we were completely playing livery but currently they will be possibly losing that sixth place in the championship to Team Green if they don't pull their socks up and start moving through this field 
but we're back at the front and Nathan Maxman has extended his lead to three seconds over Ryan Sandell. A dominant performance at the moment. In third place we now have a battle as Tim Clark has closed within half a second of Trevor Randall. And you can see Callum Brewer just in the distance there. These two have left Callum behind. The top four in this championship currently are completely different gravy to the rest. They have finished in the top four consistently. And as we said in qualifying, Trevor's always fourth. The front two rows are Nathan and Ryan. Just the pace of these guys is unbelievable. And that it's a huge shame we haven't got Steve Brown Super GT himself in this championship. It'd be great to see him competing against these drivers because we know that he's one of the top drivers on Gran Turismo Sport. But obviously Steve's a very busy man with his streaming and you can still go over and see his YouTube channel after this event of course to see what he has been doing lately which I believe is trying to save Alex Albon's career but anyway back to this battle we've got Trevor Randall and Tim Clark very close together as I said before Trevor on the pad seat the little jerky movements you can see from his car aren't just him sliding that's just the way a, a pad works when you're trying to drive with an analog stick but he's doing so well to control the throttle control the wheel spin out of these corners and Tim is putting as much pressure on him as possible these two are seven and a half seconds off the front off second place so the front two will be looking just to conserve their positions and score some good points today Trevor, obviously under pressure, has just gone purple in the first sector. So it shows he does have the pace, but because of the conditions, it is not worth pushing too hard and making a mistake. Trevor has pulled a little bit more of a gap there, down to turn four on Tim Clark. The two are known for their battles, I believe... They are, they are former challengers for the championship and it would be great to see them continuing to challenge each other in GT Sport as well We'll look further back. There's Callum Brule and Freddie Gallagher. Those the two younger drivers in Club 100 certainly. Shane, they've got the mic to mix it with the older crew of Trevor and Tim. No disrespect. Martin Robinson close behind. There's Jay Elliott with another slowdown penalty, I believe, for track limits. Jay, keep it on the island. Come on, you're in eighth place. And Sam Dimelo, close behind, has just managed to get past Peter Harris as well on this lap, I believe. So Peter's still having a good run there in 10th place, but has lost a couple of positions in the last few minutes. We have 3 minutes 40 to go on the clock. This race has flown by. For back, Jack Cameron looking to try and get back into the top 10 still. This shows one mistake, and you really have to push hard to get back into that top 10. 14 seconds further back we have Eric Mignon bit of a lonely race here for Eric but Andrew Maffa and Kirv Kalirai very close together the two teammates fighting hard over 13th as Andrew lets Kirv go there that looked very much like a non-battle there Andrew very savvy rules racing knows, knows the story knows probably today Kirv made a mistake he's a quicker man and can possibly drag them back through the field but just under three minutes to go they will be only have eyes for Eric Mignon in 12th we head back to this battle Tim Clark and Trevor Randall this is so reminiscent 
of their battles back at Ella Park in 2012. We have really been given a treat here. These two drivers have been close all season to be fair, these two. A bit like the lead two, they've been pushing each other along and it, it stretched them away from midfield, especially in this race. But it'll be interesting to see if Tim will make a move. He seems to be working Trevor out, working out where he's quicker, whether he can make that move stick. He's got a good run out of turn one there, but Trevor, savvy racer, not defending. He knows he's got the gap, oh, half a car to the inside. Will that put him offline for the acceleration? It will slightly, Trevor. Tr Tim tried to look up the inside there, it didn't quite work again early on the power, and he's lost a bit of time there to Trevor. They head down towards the slippery turn four. Both of them hitting the apex well. And Tim's trying to straighten the car up as quickly as possible to get the power down. But the gap staying the same between these two drivers. We'll stay with this for a little bit. It's possibly one of the closest battles on circuit at the moment. Everybody's sort of a little spread out now. Apart from, I think, the battle for 8th place. No, sorry, the battle for ninth. we've got Peter Harris, Sam Dimelo and Jack Cameron, who's finally caught up on to the back. So that's Peter back past Sam Dimelo at some point in this race. But we are now going on to the final lap. And it's Nathan Maximum leading by a clear five and a half seconds now. We haven't seen a huge amount of him during this race who's just been plodding along and you can see the consistency of his times on the right hand side a 44 9 44-6 44-7 44-9 44-7 44-8 that consistency has seen him pull away from Ryan Sandell his championship rival and I have to be honest the whole field has done a great job in this race the talk has been going on throughout the lead up to this event thinking we're going to see spins galore and it's going to be spin after spin after spin but we haven't had that Nathan Maximum dominating the race from pole position here and looks like he's going to have the fastest lap of the race as well he only set that a lap before so still getting used to the conditions now but we may not even have every driver finish the race officially here. We've got a spinner down at the final corner. That will be Eric Mignon. Kirf Kalli and Andrew Maffer come, have come home in 12th and 13th already. Eric Mignon comes home 14th. So the Golf Porsches are going to bookend with the results page here. But it's Nathan Maxman who comes around the final corner. He's controlled the race from pole position. He slides it out the final corner and across the line to win this race at Red Bull Ring. Round five of the GT Sport Club 100 Championship. Ryan Sandell, very happy with second place there. And will Trevor ha Randall hold on to third? Tim Clark right behind him, but yes, Trevor holds on. And that was a great battle between them two all the way to the line. Callum Brewer coming home in fifth place. Uh, a great haul of points for Team White. Freddie Gallagher with the best result of the season in sixth. Martin Robinson coming home in seventh. Jay Elliott down in eighth. Another slowdown penalty, but he'll cross the line ahead of his teammate Jack Cameron, who comes home in ninth. Sam Dimelo in tenth with Peter Harris just missing out on the top ten with Sam getting him on the final lap. But that is a season's first wet race and it was won by Nathan Maximum who takes pole position and fastest lap, never made a mistake all day long. Well that was a great race, we did not expect the cars to make so, well the drivers to make so little mistakes during that race. The wet conditions were certainly not what we really 
we're enjoying in practice. I know there's a lot of spins, a lot of conversation about whether it would become a dry race, but I think that really showed the skills of all 14 drivers out there today. We're now going to take a little break. It'll only be about five minutes just to give myself a bit of a rest and the drivers to go get a drink and get ready for their half an hour endurance race again around Yamagiwa Miyabi circuit. And I will rejoin you in about five minutes time.
May Abbey circuit is a fictional circuit based on the game and it's a four mile circuit set in Kyoto, Japan. As the name suggests, the track is a combination of the Yamagiwa and the Abbey circuit to form one massive track. A bit like the Norschleife, but not as long. As it's a hybrid, almost all the techniques and lines employed on the Yamagiwa circuit can be applied here, but this circuit is the reverse direction of the Mayabi, which means that we have a much tougher combination of corners in the middle of the circuit. Welcome back to everybody. This, as I just said, is Kyoto Driving Park, Yamagiwa, Miami Circuit. We're currently just looking at Nathan Maximum, our championship leader, going around. Tim Clark currently the quickest here. He's just crossed, Nathan's just crossed over back onto the Yamagiwa Circuit. The circuit here is 6.846 kilometers and 20 turns and it appeared, first appeared on this game. It hasn't been on previous Gran Turismo games. So it's a, an open challenge for everybody as currently Callum Brewell and Tim Clark are the quickest in this practice session. The grid will be set from the race results last time out at Red Bull Ring like you've just seen. So Nathan will be starting from the back of this half an hour endurance race. And it'll be interesting to see how the drivers get on. Tim Clark was the winner of our last reverse grid race at round four. And it boosted him into the championship fight. Nathan has managed to pull away again at Red Bull Ring. But if he can't come through the field here quick enough, drivers like Tim Clark, Trevor Randall and his main championship Ryan, Ryan, rival Ryan Sandell will be looking to take advantage and keep Nathan back in the pack. You can currently see Nathan riding around with his teammate Eric Mignon. These two were first and last at Red Bull Ring just now as Ryan Sandell goes quickest, Tim Clark second and Kiev Cali Rye up into third with Eric Mignon in 5th, split with Callum Brewell. This circuit, I've driven it myself, it's not the easiest one, especially in the mid, it's a lovely section on the Yamagiwa side, but as I stated before, the twisty nature of the Miami circuit is meaning that every corner on that part of the circuit is built to be the other way around which adds an extra challenge. For Club 100 boys, it's probably like trying to go around Rye House backwards. I wouldn't suggest trying to go through that final corner as the first corner with a whole pack behind you. We could only see cars, carts on the roof at that stage. But the race will begin straight away. We won't be having a qualifying session because of that reverse grid, I think they're just discussing what to do about Jack Cameron Drayton who had an issue. But there we go, we can see Sam has set the grid order and Jack should be in his correct position. So here we go for this 30 minute endurance race. Remember any tyres can be used so some drivers could be on softs and hards. We've got Eric Mignon on the pole from Andrew Maffa, we've got Kirk Kelly Ryan third and Peter Harris in fourth, Sam Demelo fifth and Jack Cameron Drayton in sixth. So we have the build up to a start, it's a great chance for Team Black to get a good result with second and third on the grid as we wait for the lights to go out and the race to begin. And we're away, it's a good start there by Eric Mignon and Andrew Maffa off the front row see Martin Robinson a bit further back with four abreast going into turn one and whoa, are they all going to get through the first corner 
as Eric Mignon continues to lead Andrew Maffin in second place, Peter Harris in third, and a great start by Martin Robinson to move up into fourth place, trying to take advantage of this reverse grid. And it's chaos behind with Jack, Jack Cameron, Callum Brewell, Kirf Kalurai has dropped down to seventh place after starting third on the grid. And we've got battles all over the place. We've got for three abreast for the lead with Peter Harris, Eric Mignon, who forces Andrew Maffa wide, but still side by side. And it's Maffa for the lead. Andrew Maffa goes up into the lead in the Frey, Frey Bentis cars. A little nudge by Martin Robinson there, but Andrew Maffa leads the race with Eric Mignon still side by side with him. But no, Andrew does lead from Eric Mignon, Martin Robinson and Peter Harris. He's top four slightly clear of Jack Cameron Drayton and Callum Brewer. But the fighting is not over. Martin Robinson looking very aggressive in third place here. But the first of our championship contenders are not even in the top eight at this moment. So this is great news for some, some drivers running wide there actually uh, great news for some of the drivers to gain time in the championship and Eric Mignon goes for that was so so late he missed the postman there but he drops down into 5th place Andrew Maffa leads Martin Robinson a great opening lap by Martin who reminded me on in the break that he's on the pad as well so he did an amazing job at Red Bull Ring to to stay inside the top 10 but Martin is now pushing Andrew for the lead uh, make sure Andrew gets plenty of coverage here normally is the one commentating on all of us but it's nice to turn the tables on him and he leads here at Yamagiwa and he's actually going to cross the line and officially lead the opening lap of the race Martin Robinson in second Peter Harris in third Freddie Gallagher a good start by him and he's up into fourth he will be looking to take advantage of the championship rival staying further back. We've got Tim Clark across the line in fifth, Eric Mignon in sixth, Jay Elliott in seventh, and Ryan Sundell, the first championship contender in eighth. Ninth is Jack Cameron running very wide there, trying to hold on right round the outside. That is not going to work for Jack, and he's going to lose a couple of positions as Kirv Kalirai takes ninth, and Trevor Randall moves up into tenth. Nathan Maximum there in 12th trying to fight his way through he's got alongside Jack Cameron and will come the inside line for the next corner as Callum Brewer has dropped to 13th and Sim Sam Dimolo takes a watch and brief in 14th but we go back to the leaders and Sam Dimolo, uh, Andrew Maffer sorry, has pulled away a bit here as Peter Harris has took third I think Martin Robinson must have made a mistake there because he's fallen back to fourth behind Freddie Gallagher um, that is the top four nicely spread out at the moment. In fifth, we have Tim Clark. He sneaked his way through with Ryan Sandell in sixth. There's two championship contenders moving up onto the back of his pack. Tim Clark, the winner last time out when we had a reverse grid. As Freddie goes for second place on Peter Harris, the two Audi TTs side by side. Peter in the pink car, Freddie in the purple. And Freddie takes the position. Now, can he do anything about this lead that Andrew Maffa has? We'll head back to Andrew in the Frey Bentos car. Takes that, that merge between the two circuits nicely as he heads up the hill towards a hairpin. Andrew driving very well here. His best position of the season so far is 11th place in... So that's his qualifying result. 8th place in round 4 was his best result so he will be looking to try and get a top five out of this if he can the top five actually have pulled away but Freddie Gallagher is now looking for the lead off Andrew Maffer he's got it will Andrew stick it back up the inside no Freddie Gallagher leads I think Andrew made a bit of a mistake there ran a bit wide and Freddie made his way through in third place we have Martin Robinson still fighting Peter Harris now we saw this from Peter last time out in the reverse grid race. Stayed up there for a long time and then fell back late on. But Tim Clark is on his inside and goes through into fourth place. Tim Clark in the Jaguar is perfectly placed here to win this run. 
race if he can keep this pace up further back we can see Kirf Kelly Road just ahead of Ryan Sandell and Trevor Randall but the top two have pulled away a little bit and we'll go on board if we can no it's not letting us no we'll just quit out and go back to the spectator mode which will allow us to go on board and we'll go on board with Sam Dimolo here trying to fight off Jay Elliott and Jack Cameron Jay not enjoying the car, the Dodge Viper at the moment but we'll look back there's Eric Mignon who started on the pole back down in 14th behind Callum Brewer at the moment not lost touch with the rest of the pack though so still plenty of time left 24 minutes remaining of this race but we'll head back and go on board with Andrew Maffer as he continues to try and apply the pressure to Freddie Gallagher this race apparently from testing very hard on the tyres the drivers have been saying so we might see a few pit stops here and that may just play into some drivers hands who can look after the tyres Andrew a very conservative racer on the tyres normally and as you can see the wear already starting on his car towards the front of the tyres as he but the gap behind is nice and big so he will be able to take his time as Tim Clark moves up into third place ahead of Martin Robinson and Peter Harris with Kirv Kali Rai coming to the party this is a much better showing as he dives up the inside of Peter Harris and takes fifth place slight nudge on Martin Robinson as he comes, follows through but he will stay fourth and fifth great drive by Kirv Kali Rai and the two Frey Ventos cars the two Audis are I mean, so much better than at Red Bull Ring where they finished 12th and 13th. They're now running 1st and 5th as Kirv takes another look at Martin Robinson, trying to get the move done nice and early while well, the championship contenders are further back in the pack. But now we have a queue of cars. We have Martin Robinson, Kirv Fallerai, Peter Harris, who continues to look to try and make the move there, but not he won't make it round the outside of there will he surely he's trying it but Kirf will run him out wide they're still side by side heading up into the S's will Pete get the inside line no he won't and that may leave the door open for Ryan Sandell in the Dodge Viper to make his way past Peter Harris he needs to start making moves because Tim Clark's already up into third place and he does he makes it past Peter Harris Next up is Trevor Randall who makes his way past Peter as well. A bad couple of corners for Peter. Will he be able to hold off Nathan Maximum? Or will he fall back into ninth place? It looks like Peter will fall back sadly. As Nathan's up on the inside. But bad few corners for Peter, but he just needs to get his head back going. And we got a change at the front. Well, we did have a change up front. Andrew Maffa had took the lead, but now Freddie's got it back, and Tim Clark is closing on these two very quickly. We're only on lap four. We have 21 minutes, 20 seconds remaining of this race, and the top three are now together. Two Audis and a Jaguar looking to keep this lead ahead of the chasing pack that you can see coming up behind and that is a battle that leads all the way back to the tail end of the top 10 we've got a fastest lap of race for Sam Dimolo at the moment he's back down in 10th place at the moment but he's managed to collapse onto the back of that pack so it is the top 10 that are trying to close on the top 3 there's Jack Cameron in 11th Jay Elliott fighting Eric um, Callum Brill for 12th and Eric Mignon in 13th but this pack of three will be looking not to fight now trying to stay away from this lead pack which is now led by Ryan Sandell who's come through from the back of the grid Martin Robin has made himself past Keir Calleray who also goes alongside Martin Robinson who runs wide that will give Kira for place and Martin Robinson pits Martin Robinson is the first of our drivers into the pits on the super soft tyres and he's gone for super softs again so they were only lasted in four laps it'd be interesting to see if he decides to pit again 
surely he will have to if he's pitted after 10 minutes and he comes out just ahead of Eric Mignon but we go back to the leaders it's Andrew Mafford Tim Clark has made his way past Freddie Gallagher for second place and will start applying the pressure you saw Andrew look in his mirrors there and he will be looking at the front end of that Jaguar hoping not to let it through Andrew actually a works for Jaguar Land Rover but I don't think there'll be any work orders here to let Tim Clark through and let the Jaguar win this race he will be looking to take that win for Team Black in the Frey Bentos car as ooh, Tim takes takes a look a little nudge will he let Andrew go yes he does sensible drive there by Tim wouldn't want to get an ABC penalty early on in this race We've still got only had 10 minutes gone as Andrew runs a little wide and Tim goes to the inside little mistake there by Andrew and Tim has took advantage but Andrew hanging it out around the outside and will be looking to gain that position back down into the merge of the two circuits he stamps on the brakes and he looks like he's got it great move there by Andrew Maffer that was brilliant but this fighting is allowing the pack from fourth place onwards to close back up and as you can see Ryan in the pink Dodge Viper just flashes by but he's bringing the pack with him Sam Dimelo up to eighth place after that fastest lap and he will be looking for a great result here lots of different lines being taken by these drivers at the moment through some of these corners still trying to learn the circuit even after a bit of practice as Tim goes for the lead up into the final corner Andrew gives him room will he give him room on the exit yes he does and he, Andrew dips into the slipstream of Tim and Tim Clark will come across the line to lead a lap on lap start of lap number six Andrew Maffer continues takes a dive oh that's a late dive by Andrew Maffer but he's managed to leave a bit of a gap will he make it back through side by side door handle to door handle not quite will that let Freddie Lapp have a dig and we now have a five car battle for the lead we have, oh and Andrew's wide through there and that lets Freddie Gallagher through and it's chaos behind us Kiv Kali Rai comes through and Andrew blocks off Ryan Sandel but Ryan dives to the inside is Andrew having tyre troubles here he seems to be losing grip but he's dropped down to 5th place now as Tim Clark leads from Freddie Gallagher Andrew's teammate Kiv Kali Rai holding off Ryan Sandel here into the head switching the circuits back onto him off the Yamagiwa circuit still defending into there Team Black still looking at a very good result here which will boost their championship after having a very poor race at Red Bull Ring but onto the back of his pack is coming Trevor Randall Nathan Maximum and Sam Dimelo who is absolutely flying in this race still sitting there with the fastest lap of race we have 16 minutes left and we've only had one pit visitor which is Nathan Robinson not Nathan Robinson sorry Martin Robinson <laughs> but Kirf still trying to make his way past Freddie Gallagher let gets alongside Freddie will fight back the track will go in his favour and Kirf has to hold on to third but he now needs to look at the shining lights of Ryan Sandell close behind Kirf goes for a move and gets Freddie into the corner Freddie gives him room and Kirf is up into second place this is the best showing we've seen by Kirf Kalirai so far this season but it is Tim Clark pulling out of the front and showing the way in these pit stop races at the moment luckily it's a dry race so we won't have the problems we had at Red Bull Ring with grip as we see them go down the start finish straight again Kirf Kalirai pits and Freddie Gallagher pits both of them in, we've got pit stop race oh and almost the whole field's in only Tim Clark and Brian Sandell have continued onwards everybody pitting on 15 minutes to try and make this a one stop race and there's Martin Robinson who pitted early, he comes into it in 5th place, he's been setting some good lap times to keep him that position and keep him this fight so 
as we've exited the pits. Freddie Gallagher still right behind Kirk Calliroy. They have both dropped Andrew Mafford, who's fallen behind Martin Robinson. As the two Audi TTs go side by side, and Freddie has got the inside line into the long left hander and will pass Kirk Calliroy. Now we'll look forward to our leaders. These two drivers have not pitted yet. Tim Clark and Ryan Sander. Are they going to try and make it through to the end of the race without pitting? I doubt it. I guess I'll cover off the undercut by pitting on the next lap. Tim had enough time in hand to be able to do that. Ryan will be looking for an overcut on some of the drivers in front of him. He just caught up. His pace is there to possibly do so as well. But we will see a bit later in this lap. And Kirf has got pa past Freddie Gallagher somewhere on the circuit. So these two still swapping positions the Freddie Pentos car and the Silk Cup car. As Freddie has another look around the outside, swarming all over the back of Kirf like a horde of bees. As we look behind, we also have Andrew Maffin looking at the outside of Martin Robinson. The two go door handle to door handle, and that makes Andrew one ride. And Nathan Maximum, our championship leader, takes a look at Andrew. Andrew says, no, you're not coming through here. And that's about Trevor Randall to have a look at Nathan. These two quite close in the championship. Nathan defends hard. Trevor just ducks underneath. And this is going to allow Sam Dumoulin to have a look as well. But Nathan's still side by side with... Oh, they've gone up the inside of Martin Robinson, who must have made a mistake there. And Trevor holds on to the position just about. Will Sam Dumoulin dive up the inside of his teammate? Last time we saw this, they collided, but not this time. Sam Dumoulin makes his way through. Still with the fastest lap of the race so far. And our two leaders are in. Ryan Sandell and Tim Clark. So let's see where they come out. We'll have a look forward. And there is... There's Tim Clark. There he is with a 9 tenth of a second lead over Kirv Calliroy. He'll have to get his tyres up to temperature. But that has worked out nicely for Tim Clark to come back out onto a clear circuit. still see Freddie Gallagher just behind all over the back of Kirov with the Jaguar of Team White leads with Tim Clark at the wheel. Eric Munyon is still going round in 14th place only 19 seconds off the lead so after almost 20 minutes of racing this pack is still quite close if somebody decides to dive to the pits again. Jay Elliott down in 13th, not what he was hoping, and certainly not what his team was hoping, with Jack sideways into the circuit swap in 12th place, fighting Callum Brewer. There is Andrew Maffer, dropped down to 10th place currently. Must have been a mistake there by Andrew, because Peter Harris has got through, and Martin Robinson. But a good drive by those two drivers so far. There's Nathan Maxman trying to make... Uh, he's lost a position to Sam Dimolo, actually, there. Sam Dimolo absolutely flying in this race at the moment and coming through from a poor start. He did start about mid-grid, fell back early on, but is certainly finding his form in these longer races. Best finish last time out, I believe, in the longer race, which was fifth place, so he'll be looking to try and get better that and he's looking at fifth place now off Trevor Randall if he can keep Nathan behind him. There is Trevor with a two and a, almost three second gap to close to Kirv Calera in front. There's Kirv down in fourth, lost a position to Ryan Sandell who's caught this pack and Ryan is currently looking the fastest man on the circuit but Tim Clark does fit sort of feels he's not pushing just yet as Ryan makes a mistake behind Freddie Gallagher and Kirv Calleroy dies to the inside but Ryan will have the inside for the next corner but side by side across the line and into turn one and Ryan will still have the inside will he still keep position? Yes he will good Good defending there by Ryan Sandell, but he's run slightly wide. We've got 10 minutes of this race to go. Kirv Calliroy back alongside, but let's Ryan go. There's no point fighting side by side through the S's here. 
especially with Trevor Randall trying to close behind. Freddie Gallagher having a good race actually so far. This would be his best result of the season so far. Missed round two, so not been in the cars as much. Actually hasn't done one of these endurance 30-minute races yet with pit stops because he missed the last race and round two still hasn't happened due to the connection issues. So it's actually pretty impressive drive by Freddie who wouldn't know how the tyres would go we're going to react but Ryan Sandell just got his nose up the inside he's forced some issue but Freddie fights him off and keeps the position but he's going to have to start defending from Ryan but Ryan really needs to get past as he dives to the inside Freddie goes but they're still side by side and Freddie will hold it out around the outside he'll have the inside for the next corner as the circuits swap again in the background you can see it's all Nathan Maxman running wide in the background but Freddie Gallagher continuing to ghost for whatever reason now loses the position to Ryan Sander would have been able to hold that off but for some reason the game ghosting helped Ryan in making that move Ryan goes defensive straight away into the hairpin as Kirk Gallagher takes the dive will he make it past Freddie Gallagher side by side again they've let Ryan now go now and Kiev Kalu Rai moves up into third place Freddy lost out two positions and two corners there but will return to fight another day as he has Trevor Randall closing in on him and this race is full of action all the way through Freddy goes again I'm not quite sure why that's happening but certainly an exceptional performance by Kiev at the moment not a driver we've seen right up in the top three fighting for podiums yet this season. Uh, best result for Kira is sixth in round four. And that's the best we've seen. We've not seen him with this kind of pace, but this is a great drive by him so far. Possibly driver of the day on this race. But we'll wait and see with seven minutes remaining. But Tim Clark is cruising at the front in his Jaguar. I feel he can probably pull out a little bit more if he wants to. He's just set his fastest lap of race with a tw 2 minute 25.4. Still four tenths off the fastest lap, which has been taken by Trevor Randall, who's now closing in on this group. There's Trevor closing in on his teammate, Freddie Gallagher. And he's managed to pull away from Nathan and Sam Dimelo, who was driving so well earlier on. But Trevor closing in on this gap. Can Trevor make it yet another podium for himself? He got second last time out in the endurance race behind Tim Clark. And the two were inseparable at Red Bull Ring when Trevor managed to hold Tim off. Well, the pace Trevor is going at the moment, he might have to work hard to catch Tim Clark, but he might be able to join him on the podium. Brian Sandell now pulled clear of Kiev Kalarai in second place, and it'll be interesting to see whether he can close out on Tim Clark, who is controlling the pace in front. Further back, we've got Nathan Maxwell still fighting off the attentions of Sam Dimelo. Even though Sam's down in seventh, he's been very competitive in this race. I said that Martin Robinson was outperforming him in the team at the moment, and Sam has come back as he runs very wide out of the chicane there and loses a bit of time to Nathan. Sam has come back with a very strong performance in this race so far. Commentary curse, he's running wide all over the place now. And he's lost about a second to Nathan up through them two corners. Next up, Peter Harris up in eighth place. Driving very well in this race. This would be his best position of the season. I said that the red ball ring and it all went wrong, so we'll wait and see with that one. In ninth place we have Andrew Mafu who's driving brilliantly in this race. He may have fallen back to ninth, but his defence of the lead early on 
the first 10 minutes of this race and, well, until the pit stop to be honest the lap before the pit stop he fell back to about 5th but now he's holding off Jack Cameron and Viper and Callum Brule who just I don't know what it is about these longer races Callum can keep up with Tim throughout the 20 minute short race opening we have as Jack runs wide again and Callum will get him on the exit will he? still side by side and Callum has got it no Jack takes a position back and Callum does the undercut and gets through but Callum's been able to keep up with Tim throughout the opening race of the night and then when he gets to this race which tie wear is a bit more important he seems to be losing a bit of pace he admitted it last time out struggling with the tyres and it seems like it must be the same again Martin Robinson has fallen back to 12th as well he was having a strong race earlier on and I don't know whether that's tyres from his up he was the one to pit 10 minutes into the race and it looks like he's trying to make it through to the end on these tyres and that might just not happen if you've had to pit after 10 minutes I, I can't see you being able to make the next 20 and at the back we have Eric Mignon fighting off the attentions of Jay Elliott who really will just want to see the back of this Dodge Viper in this championship but back to the front and Tim Clark has pegged the lead at two minutes Two, two minutes at two and a half seconds just controlling the pace now he knows Ryan is in second place he's up to his pace by a couple of attempts just to hold him off but he is not far enough away but a mistake would not close it down there's Ryan as we look back and there's Kiv Kala Ryan a clear third place now managed to pull ahead of Trevor Randall who has moved ahead of his teammate Freddie Gallagher where if that was Freddie deciding his team leaders a bit, little bit quicker or whether it was a move for the championship you know. Freddie, Trevor is faster than you type kind of thing we'll never know because we didn't see him Trevor, fastest lap of the race is faster than everybody never mind you Freddie and we will see whether he can now close on Kirv Kalleright and make that a podium to close the championship lead Nathan Maxman here by himself in 6th place really needs to start closing this gap now he only had a 1 point lead over Ryan Sandell that was extended in the first race but that gap is just going to disappear in this race he's got Tim Clark in 1st Ryan Sandell in 2nd and his other championship rider Trevor Randall in 4th this is not the race Nathan really wanted from it from this event he really needed to capitalise coming through the field but for some reason he has not been able to do so the way the experienced Tim Clark has done who continues to lead this race with one and a half minutes to go he will be going on to his final lap this time around he's about halfway around coming into the third sector of the race track right now and the lead continues to be two and a half seconds. This has been a masterclass by the Jaguar driver for Team White. Continue to look at second place and possibly your new championship leader, Ryan Sandell. I can't quite work the maths out off the top of my head here, but Ryan Sandell certainly doing enough to threaten the championship lead right now unless Nathan Maximum can do something about it he is closing in on Freddie Gallagher but slowly so Tim Clark crosses the line to start his final lap with 34 seconds to go he's not going to get round that quick but he goes off into turn one he's just controlling the pace now controlling the tyres making sure there's no mistakes and he should should come home with the victory here the drivers have all sort of spread out. I think the closest battle will be whether Nathan Maximum can close on Freddie Gallagher here. We'll look further back and we can see Peter Harris and Andrew Maffer having a battle here in the two Audis. These two drivers, really strong drives here. They've had their issues this season, but to get both get a top 10 from this 
is pretty good. I know Andrew started on second on the grid and Peter was up I think fourth or fifth but these two drivers have certainly showed they can battle it with the best in this race and after 30 minutes they're only 20 seconds off the lead and ahead of Jack Cameron, Callum Brill, Martin Wilson and we've already got a couple of finishers in Jay Elliott and Eric Mignon who comes home 14th for the second time tonight but we move back to our leader Tim Clark who has extended his lead on in this lap actually I think Ryan Sandell just trying to bring it home for the points in second place Trevor Randall will get the extra point for fastest lap but there is just no stopping Tim Clark in these endurance races he, we missed the first one of the season happening at the end tagged on to the end of the season due to connection issues the second rate endurance race of the season Tim Clark dominated looked in control of the whole race and again one pit stop in the middle of the race no issues and Tim Clark heads down towards the final corner to take what will be his second win of the season to match Nathan Maximum Tally and move himself into championship contention as he comes out the final corner he can see the checkered flag being waved he flashes his lights heads over to pit wall and wins here at Yamagiwa a clear victory controlled victory by the master almost pros like in his driving knowing what he needed to do to control the tyres Ryan Sandell your new championship leader in second place Kirf Kalirai uh, probably the driver of the race for me third place not look like getting a podium this season so far so that is a great result for him Trevor Randall in fourth coming through from the back of the grid Freddie Gallagher's teammate in fifth and Nathan Maximum in sixth not the result he was after but Tim Clark yet again in victory circle as he celebrates his victory here at the Kyoto Driving Park. That was a great race. We'll just go through the race results. We've got Tim Clark, who won it by three seconds over Ryan Sandell. Kirv Kalarai come home in third. Trevor Randall fourth. Freddie Gallagher fifth. Your former championship leader, Nathan Maximum, in sixth. He'll be close between him and Ryan. I think Ryan might just pip it. But we'll wait to see when the championship comes out. Strong drive by Sam Dimolo in seventh. He had fastest lap for most of the race, actually. And hopefully this kickstarts his championship. Peter Harris and Andrew Maffer, as I said before, in eighth and ninth. Strong top ten results for them split across the line very closely I think that was less than seven hundredths of a second and Callum Brewer coming home gain a top 10 when his teammate has won the race bookending the top 10 for Team White just staying ahead of Jack Cameron who looked like he was sliding that Viper all over the place throughout the race Martin Robinson a disappointing 12 for him he was up there in the top 4 for a while Jay Elliott would be very disappointed with 13th and Eric Mignon as I said before in 14th so that has been the end of our week 3 for Club 100 Jeep Gran Turismo Sport action I'm just going to look at what the calendar was planned to be we should be having some more races next week if it all goes to plan I will find this calendar in the chat here somewhere if you just give me a few seconds I think the plan was to run two more nights and on the final night we will be running that spare second race and an O-plate event 
here we go this is a calendar so next week we will have a spa circuit with the Porsche and Suzuka with the endurance race that is going to be one great day's racing two of the crown circuits for any motorsport calendar and then in week six we plan to go back to seaside for the group four endurance race to end the season and an O plate race in the Porsches which will be a no holds single race for everyone to fight for with no team orders so that is it for the club 100 action for tonight as you can see they're getting ready to practice for Suzuka next week and Trevor is possibly already ready to go out on track but for now I will leave you and see you next Tuesday for the next two rounds of the Club 100 Gran Turismo Sport Championship.